call the meeting to order. Um, now we will have the roll call. Uh, so please speak and say I'm here um, for everyone, just so we're very clear. Okay. Sage is not here. Laurel, right here. Pamela is not here. Teresa, here. Susan, here. Danielle, here. Eve, no, you just here. <laughs> I'm here. Good, good. Yes. Okay. I'm here. Melody. Here. There's a little tiny delay, it sounds like. Okay. And then. I'm here. Okay. Cindy Tiger and Stephanie for our service keys. Right. As well as piano. Sorry. Okay. okay. And also present are Angela Brill, our administrator, Laura Mann, and our esteemed council member, Susie Idalo Barney, whose birthday is today. Woo! Yay! Thank you. Okay, we'll make it snappy. Do we have any here? Do we have any public invited to be heard? No. Thank you. Okay, uh, the minutes, the March 21st meeting minutes. Does anybody have any questions or corrections on the minutes from last week? Okay. Okay. Just ask them. okay. You do. I have to double check it. It's okay, you do agree. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the minutes. Laura? I move to approve the minutes for March 21st. Okay. Second? I second. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Everyone that's voting aye, aye. please say aye. 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 Okay. Any nays? Any abstentions? One abstention. Okay, one abstention. Okay, so, all right. Thank you. How, so just say six, six, six eyes, one zero abstention. Days, one abstention, the motion passes. The right, motion passes. <laughs> okay, do we have any additions or corrections to tonight's meeting, the April 18th meeting? I have one. Okay. Uh, and what you have in front of you is, is likely correct. Uh, so, uh, versus what was posted earlier, number 11 is now going to be Board and Commission's Code of Ethics Review, which then moves everything else down. So, new business is 12, Commissioner Comments is 13, and adjournment is 14. Is that what you have in front of you all? Yes. Okay, yes, that's what I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, Susie, would you like to make? Bring us news from the city council, please. Sure. And, um, you know, my apologies for last month. We had a month housing authority commissioners meeting that was shifted from Tuesday night to Thursday night. Um, there have been concern with different. So in Boulder and um, Fort Collins City Council, they had um, protesters. And so we were expected to have some protesters for um, really? the ceasefire, the one to do a ceasefire. So I mean in Fort Collins they actually glued their hands to the brick wall. So it got pretty intense. So we were trying to find a way to put our meeting in a way that we could continue the housing authority, conduct that business without it being interrupted by um, protesters. So we shifted that. So fortunately we, you know, the conversations have been very civil. Um, so we've had people come and speak and probably invited to be heard, but they've been very respectful and civil to these events. Um, so that was to that regard. Um, some things that kind of impact you all in the community is we made final decision on the 4th of July. So Kiwanis does do host the fireworks, they pay for the fireworks. The um, component that the city, the role that the city plays is that we provide public safety and traffic um, mitigation. So that's our contribution to that. We had heard from several members of the community for the past year that they did not like the fireworks at Fox Hill Country Club because it felt very, you know, just elite and just kind of out off to the side. So they, they kind of wanted people, we, got, we heard that people wanted it more at the city, like the center of city. We could not get it back at the Boulder County Fairgrounds um, after COVID when they reopened it. 
Um, I know that there was some concern for public safety that, you know, just even like the last 10, you know, five, 10 years, there has been challenge with the growth in, around um, and the, the influx of people coming to, to Longmont. So it, it was, that area was more challenging for public safety to keep people safe and in appropriate spaces to watch the fireworks. In addition to, you know, we have a, an uh, uh, osprey nest. Oh, yes. So there, I mean, it's right there. So if we're looking at, at taking care of wildlife, you know, that's, it, it, it wasn't feasible anymore and for a variety of reasons. So we have allowed Kiwanis, and I believe that they, they took us up on that, to have the, um, the fire training center on the corner of Martin Street and First. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we'll have it there, and then we're working with um, businesses near Wibby's. I think Wibby's has taken the lead on this, but having some kind of street fair or uh, act event in the early afternoon to kind of encourage people to not necessarily do fireworks at their houses, but we have something for you all to do. So, so that's, you know, that will be coming down. It, it seems like it's pretty exciting, so um, it's coming, coming together. And um, yeah, I don't know if you all have any questions or, uh, yes. Uh, what about parking from where down there by me and so, the fireworks there? So they're going to, I know that traffic and public safety, they're gonna to look to block off some areas, of, you know, open space areas, like empty fields to kind of put some parking in there. You know, they're still working out the technicalities. Um, the, uh, one of the things that we've suggested, um, I think it was, well, it came from Council Member Yarbrough, was looking at shuttles. So if people park at the parking garage on Hoffman, but there's a huge parking garage that's, yeah. and I park there, it's yeah. almost always empty. So, you know, people, we encourage people to, to take up those spaces and have shuttles that will take people to the, to the event. So, you know, so if they're, you know, just physically, you know, just can't make the, the walk, that we would have those kinds of accessibilities available. I live for the fireworks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we are going to also do a pre-fireworks display. We're connecting, networking with the school district. Um, they have a drone team, so uh, high school kids. So they're going to do a pre-fireworks show of the drone display and then the fireworks. <laughs> so we're just kind of hoping to, to really build up, you know, make some events for people to get involved and, and come out and Network and have fun. So. Well, I'm glad to hear all this because the fireworks in my neighborhood on the east side are extremely loud and severe. Yeah. And they're, you know, the kind that are really not permitted and nothing can be done about it. Nothing can be done about it. So we're really hoping that if we have these different events for people to to get involved with, that they'll be less inclined to just be at home and come out. And I know because on 4th of July, the week's up to, when I hear them, I get in my car and start to, who's doing it? <laughs> if I could not have to do that, I would be very happy. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or concerns for Suzy and Council? Okay. Thank you for all these being Yes. Thank you. So thank you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about the bug. Yeah. Run upstairs real quick. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item number seven. Argo with the update. Oh wait, that's me, right? Yeah. Yes, that is me. That's me. So I'm gonna not be sharing yet, yes. right? Okay. So then I have to. It's all right. I'm not finding the technology today. Don't say that. Host has disabled uh, participant screen share. I'm not. Uh, uh, share. Share options. I was really on a struggle last earlier this week. Okay, there we go. But not today, guys. Today is my day. Very easy. Everything easy and crisp. That's what we're gonna say. So uh, you have full commitments from your participants. Uh, still working on some of the uh, 
I'm still working on some of the contracts, but let's just go through the images first. Um, so your butterfly bench is going to go outside of uh, Old Town Marketplace. Oh, wow. And so Old Town Marketplace is very excited. And the artist um, today at 4.45 um, was asking if he could delay his installation so uh, paint could dry. And while I appreciate that he is repainting it for us, I said, nobody, you got to get in here when we have the welder. So he was very accommodating that way, but it's nice to know that these artists are, they want it to be the best for you. So um, that's lots of fun. This is opening up. It's a, a piece that is about six feet high. And um, I don't think that the Zoom participants are looking at this thing that you're showing to students. Okay, hold on, Zoom participants. It says I'm screen sharing. See, screen sharing. No? Yeah, but we have page two. You or page three or some other page. Okay. We should be getting slides of the artwork we're talking about, so we're working on it. Hold on. Just, yeah. How about that? Nope. Yeah, you're right, Teresa, I spoke too soon, didn't I? <laughs> don't, don't, don't jinx yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so if it's too many, it's just too many. Right, right now. How about yeah. now? <laughs> yes, no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, how are we? So um, let me back up. This is the problem. I don't think that. Okay, maybe I can. Eve, are you seeing butterfly bench now? Melanie, are you seeing butterfly bench now? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Butterfly bench painting gonna look great, and artist is sticking to his commitment. Thank you, artist. Uh, now you are seeing opening up yoga pose? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Uh, about a six foot high um, hand forged steel with patina. Uh, for those of you who weren't here for the selection process, each artist was allowed to submit up to three different artworks and the commission decided coming into the vote that we were only going to accept one piece per artist. And so that made for a really fun discussion because some artists, such as Jody Bliss here, submitted more than one work. And so um, we had to narrow it down. So this piece um, also has butterflies. You can't recording, recording in progress. Sorry. Oh, no, you're recording before. It's not recording before. That's fine. Um, butterflies up and down her spine. And so we will be putting this into St. Stephen's on the north side, kind of under the tree. It'll be visible in the round-ish, right? You kind of get three different sides of it. Um, so, and it has a little poem, etc. cetera. Um, this piece, which its title is going to come to me, is Gregory Field. Spiral of Life. Spiral of Life, good one. Um, it is ceramic and all of the little blocks have these different natural looking um, features and bits on them. Uh, he's excited to participate again, and this is gonna be along Fourth Avenue, and I'll show you locations here shortly. Perforated Basin by Joe Norman is going to be um, along Fourth Avenue up near the alleyway. Um, the Icosahedron which is an interactive piece. Any of um, our friends who play Dungeons and Dragons will recognize this dice. And so you'll go kind of walk it and it'll move around. So that's lots of fun. Um, he is a Maryland artist, not joking. And so he's getting a little bit of grace on that installation time because he's driving it here. And he's very excited. And so, you know, we don't um, provide freight, like the stipend is the stipend, and he's going to Crested Butte, and when I told him that he received the contract, he was in Georgia, so 
Uh, yeah, he's just kind of putting his hyposanhedrins all over the United States. So, um, so he'll be in Walmart. That'll be fun. Where is that one going? Um, that one is going on Fourth Avenue. It's right next to me. So very, very visible. Okay, that's so, weird. Yeah. Uh, Do we need to put him up for a night or something? You know, he didn't say ask. Um, it's never been a part of our program because it's temporary artwork. We're limited on that dollar figure. Oh, I was that said, I, would I was going to say, I would be more than okay. When he and I, he has not confirmed like exactly when he's going to arrive. If that comes up, I will. Yeah. It'll be, it would be the end of this month. Oh, yeah. 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 We're about a, yeah, end of, end of April, May. Yeah, like a week and a half, two weeks. Uh, <laughs> it's a very artist. He's on the artist timeline. Yeah. Um, Extreme Totem, which has um, is referential to Tolkien's uh, writings. Uh, it does have uh, a bunch of reclaimed materials including organ pipes that does not make music of its own accord even though the artist is what did he say if you took like a leaf blower and you like put it on it it might make noise i was like no no we're asking like if it makes noise on its own it was like no probably not <laughs> but it does have some uh, led components inside which are solar driven so that should be a lot of fun. And that too is going on 4th Avenue, uh, closer to uh, Firehouse. Mm -hmm. uh, the butterflies within a butterfly. So it's a very large butterfly. And then the stamp out of the pieces of other butterflies are within. This is a kinetic piece. So the butterfly itself is, is um, connected to each pole with a cable. And this is going to go into St. Stephen's Plaza, and it's going to be right next to the church. It will be huge and fantastic. So the yoga girl with her butterflies, and then this butterfly, and then um, our friends at LDDA have a butterfly bench that they have installed. So um, it's a thing. It's not usually it's my own. It's a thing for this year. I guess. It's it's just kind of what it's like. um, at this time, um, the artist for this work uh, applied and said that the work would be available when we're installed, and now has suddenly changed his mind. That said, um, he and I have been talking about installation, especially close to the library because it's an ampersand, um, and the work is attached to a 2,000 pound rock, but um, physics says of course that if you apply enough force onto the side of it inside of it because of its size it could tip over and at this point in time because of the plaza at the civic center um, the weight restrictions and requirements and also that they cannot drill into that um, plaza without um, making some people really mad if you know, so I'm working as hard as I can to make this this loan work. I can't promise at this point. So our, stru our structural engineer um, who's advising me, he's not happy about it. That said, if I can come up with a solution where we're, we're working with the bronze and not the stone, and I can find a sufficient um, way to uh, connect, work to the ground um, we'll move forward. But the other piece of it is that every application, you know, asked a certain parameter questions of if it was going to be available and he said okay and now it's kind of coming back on it, which as an administrator I don't really appreciate. But it is what it is. So I'm doing my best. Um, and again it's not out but I, I just I don't want you to be upset. I want you to know that I'm doing my best. Um, Charlotte Lazine's piece, um, Thoughtful Minds, is going to be on 4th Ave. Uh, so there's two little visions of that. And those are your pieces for Art on the Moon this year.
Um, yes. So if um, if the guy with the stone and the reader, yeah. um, if he's out, do we have an alternative? I've used all of our alternates. Yeah. The bear, the grizzly bear that we were super excited about, he um, was he withdrew his application because it got taken somewhere else. Um, the fox. Fox risk management said, thank you for trying, but that's too dangerous. Um, yeah, so let me show you some of those. Uh, Oh, sorry, we didn't get the bear, but whatever. Oh, now it really doesn't like me. I'm trying to make different decisions. Oh, that's not what I was positioned for. Um, let me show you. Do we have it? Yes. Okay, some of this has changed just a little bit, but for the most part, it is fairly accurate. It says my screen is paused. Do you know what that means? <laughs> I should say share. pause, but I said, shoot, let's go. Sorry, y'all. Oops, oops, oops. I think I said, um, the best we got. Okay. Here we go. All right. Uh, e, hopefully you are seeing six, five, four, three, two, one, and a bunch of images. If, yes, but no, it's not here. But here it's not. Why? 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 So, here we go. Here. Now everybody sees it. Okay. I mean, like the metaverse, right? Like, I mean, like multiple dimensions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In person and yeah, also. Okay, so number six, which is all the way to the right, you'll say, wait a minute, I didn't choose that. You're right, because that's the piece from safety and justice that we have to remove while they are currently in phase two of demolition and fixing and things. And so we could put it in storage or we can rope it into what we're doing. So while we have our handlers and we have a place to move it to, that's gonna go right in front of the firehouse or where the robot is now. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Where will I get the recycling center? Well, if we put it at the recycling center, then we wouldn't have full plants here. Okay, okay. So and it would look kind of funny if one of them was missing. That's yeah. fine. Okay. And I think it would be a hit at the recycling center because it just doesn't have the kind of dimension No, I think it's fine. It just, it's not it's very big. big. Mm -hmm. It looks bigger than it actually is when you go to the safety and justice center because it's in a bed and the bed is already three feet up yeah so it actually has height to it where it is now and our friends at safety and justice would put like christmas lights on it and like around mardi gras they put beads on it and stuff so we're going to put it back into the okay park mix. Okay. Okay. Great. So it's going to go in front of uh, the firehouse. Then next to it is Charlotte's piece, which I think is going to be really nice. And then the, the, the existence totem is going to finish us out. That thing is really, really tall. Then when you cross the alleyway, the perforated basin will be on the other side, kind of still keeping that height and then moving back down to the spiral of life. It's got a lot of geometry and a lot of those really natural ochre colors. Um, and then, you know, you've got those kind of square, more geometric images that lend, then leans itself into our, say it, icosahedron. Thank you. Excellent. All right, so that's that. Um, so here, just to give you an idea, if you think of on 4th Avenue, um, what's coming out and what's going in, robots going out, um, uh, uh, safety and justice pieces going in, Charlotte Zinks piece, uh, you guys love her so much that so we're just switching those in and out. So her old one's going out, her new one's coming in. Our dancing lady who broke is already gone, but that's where the existence totem is. Um, where that lovely Josh Ware piece is, is going out, and then the... Um, that, that's kind of our, our, our point on Main Street. Um, and then the brush with blue, then Gregory Fields pieces coming in. And then we have a, another kind of similar looking bit up close to the, uh, mm -hmm. the alleyway. 
Um, and then where Kensington's hug piece is coming out, that's where we're going to take the robot. So he's going to go over there. Susan, I know you are at the meeting. Um, so the commission, um, the cost for that piece um, is significant. Um, and when we remove it, I'm going to do a pretty detailed examination of its construction, along with um, my uh, colleagues with the Art Gambling Company. Um, so we're going to take a look at it, um, and we're going to move it over to Kensington and see, continue to see how our community feels about it. Um, and then, of course, our Rivet Rodeo is leaving the museum, and we won't be putting anything back here because all of that's going to get all torn up as we expand the museum, which is a yay. But we won't have anything here at the museum temporarily. And then um, don't listen to Fourth Avenue Breezeway. That's not true. That's going to go along Main Street in front of a whole town. So, Rivet is going out back to its own. Back to its own or being replaced somewhere else. It will not. And um, because of our public places policies and procedures, it is a cast bronze. So, it's one of many. Right. And Lafayette owns one. And our radius is 100. Yeah. So, we can't own any addition spaces within our which makes sense. Like, yeah, it's not special. Right. Everybody has the a no. Yeah, you know. yeah. He's cool. He's so He's cool. So cute. He's so cool. Um, but that's not to say. And I've told all of these artists about the opportunities that we have to, you know, that they can't create new, different works and consider them for submission for our other opportunities. So um, there's always a chance. Okay. Let's right. see. Okay, so into my multiverse. Okay, so okay. Did you tell us for sure what our installation day is? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um a week from today, we should be pretty well done. Um, I'm starting to accept some work on Tuesday and take some work out. The majority of work is gonna start at eleven AM on Wednesday, and we're gonna work straight through all of Wednesday and all of Thursday. And then the big butterfly piece in St. Stephen's will go in at 11 o'clock on Friday. So if you are interested in coming and meeting artists or talking or see us in action, uh, really anytime Wednesday along 4th Avenue primarily uh, is where most of the action is going to be happening on Wednesday or Thursday. And you can always just text me and say, which one are you at? Um, if you're really interested, I can, t I can send you the schedule, but the reason that I make a schedule is to hold artists accountable of when they're supposed to be here, but I, I always break the schedule because it's going to never work. <laughs> An artist is late, we're run behind, we can't get bolt out something. It just is how it goes. So really, come by 4th Avenue and uh, we'll be there. Okay. Yeah. It is really fun, so we encourage people to come down because it is really fun on the yeah. Are you going to see me drive a forklift? Are you licensed? Yes. Which day? Which day? I'm oh, sorry. Next Wednesday is the 24th and Thursday the 25th. And we won't have any cranes this year because we're not moving really into the crane. Super, super, super heavy. Which is great. That, you know, saves us. Yeah. It's quite a Does anybody have questions about our move? This is really helpful to see. This is very nice, thank you. Your question. They are great pieces. They really are. It's a good selection of shit from the way of And a number of um, folks are applying to, uh, you know, our, our opportunities in the parks. So that's a big deal, too. So we're reaching, we're trying to reach further, but we're reaching a more diverse group of, of artists. Which is your mission. Okay. Nice. Okay. okay. All right. Shock art update. Um, so we met a couple weeks ago. It was Pamela and Sage, although they're not here right now. Um, just went over the deets with them and then also um, they wanted to recommend moving voting from online and in person to just in person. Because we feel that 
we want to have the community voting and not outsiders voting. And this year I am planning on doing voting at two places so that everybody gets a chance to come and it's a little bit more extended than we have, um, especially last year. So the dates are, it opens for submissions May 1st and then it's gonna close May 31st. So artists have a full month to design and paint a box. And then voting will begin June 8th at Old Town Marketplace and then the 23rd is going to be the last day there. We're going to move it over to the Longmont Museum June 24th, and then voting will end July 13th, which also coincides with the free day at the Longmont Museum. So I'm really hoping to capture a lot more of Nani's and the Lego show is going to be opening. So, so we're going to have a lot of kids. It's going to be, I feel like this is going to be really good for people to come and vote and see the boxes in person versus seeing them online and then also all the headaches that come with online like it just it's much easier to capture the audience that we want voting in person oh, um and then we're going to announce the winners in the middle of, the, of july so obviously we're going to announce it after our july meeting which is uh, uh, July 18th. 18th, so that you guys can all decide on which box that you want. And then um, training will happen early August, and then we're hoping to have the artists done by November 1st this year. Because we had some artists that really left it up until the last minute and didn't finish. Oh, so I'm way more surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other piece is that. Um, Next month, the recommendation because both Sage and Pamela are not present, they can't make that recommendation to you to change that voting over from formally and officially from the way that we've done it before. It doesn't matter how we do it this year and this time is what does matter. But because it is a procurement process, we're paying these artists to do it. It needs to be a formal record of how that's going to happen. So that will be coming to you next month. And Laura has created some amazing videos that we have been working on, trying to get these assets for a while. And we, we have done some and they were not awesome. And Laura has finally, I mean finally, not finally for you, but finally, uh, created an asset that an artist who doesn't know how to create the mock pet can go step by step and figure out how to do it. And then the next piece is really going to be from a creative mind, like what does that brainstorm look like for you? What are some of the tendencies and um, what have past winners look like? Major. And like, how can you come up with your own, right? And um, so you'll be seeing those on social media. There, one is up on our website. Should I show them up on our website? Yeah, yeah sure. <gasps> Y'all want to see? Don't yeah, want to see that. that. Where's it the one that was on Facebook? Yeah, yeah so yeah, the thing I watched it. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, it was only. Yeah. Really like the first minute because nobody wants to watch longer than a minute. The actual video is 11 minutes. So it's kind of long if you don't want to watch me build a box. But it was nice to see this new on Facebook and I'm enjoying oh, good. your posting. Yeah, yeah. I see it. Thank you. Great right job. Yeah. Really yeah. Every year we get a little easier and better at everything with this. I'm really grateful. Yeah, I guess like the important thing I think with me being a working artist is I'm kind of approaching it in a way that how would I do it, but then also being able to explain that is also been, I think really helpful for a lot of people. Um, and with the whole design thing too, you know, I, I have this insight where I was able to kind of take our whole collection and be like, okay, so we have 20, 30 percent landscapes, and then next genre is like animals, and then next genre is like clever or whatever. <laughs> so it's like okay. When you're an artist, like obviously you want to make something that is still true to what you are doing generally, but then what can skew you in a way to make the community love your design even more? So I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing currently right now. I'm actually making my own box. Um, but yeah, so let's. This is so the whole thing, but no. At least we got to get to the animation part because. That's oh yeah, I did do. I was like, I want to do animation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you can't hear. Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks so cute, though. I know. I like to it. It's a good one. You have good oh, 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 Welcome to my studio. I'm the Art and Public Places program assistant. And today, 
I will be teaching you how to build a shot guard in my pet box.
I've never met any of the people that are on the selection panel other than Teresa and me. So we have community members that are yes. willing to be engaged, which is super wonderful. So that, and then we have one meeting a month until we meet with artists. That's right. So the the short list will be May 14th. Of course, all of these meetings are open to the public. Uh, the discussion will be all of the applications that have come in, and then the selection panel will be charged with narrowing that down to three finalists, which then will be paid to complete their proposal and then come and uh, present those proposals June 4th. And so of the meetings that we really put out on social media for people to come to, the June 4th one, I think, is the most engaging and community feedback will be more most applicable at that time. I am in connection with the um, HOA folks over in that neighborhood as well as one um, uh, resident who would have served on the selection panel, except she's expecting a baby like that day. So she didn't want to commit to um, being on the selection panel if she wasn't going to be able to to attend. So, uh, but that's great. So we do have community engagement in the neighborhood, which this park is going to be, um, but no one on the selection panel lives in the neighborhood. So, um, but the parks department, I thought, did a really good job of saying, while this is a neighborhood park, parks are community assets. So uh, that every selection panel should feel com confident and comfortable that the decision that they're making, while of course it's for the neighborhood, moreover, it's that your community is so, and I think everybody left feeling confident and comfortable. Did scare them about the she digital business? She did it very fast. Yeah, I did. I always do. I scare them just enough. So after they've logged in and they've gone through that process, they're like, oh, this isn't that hard anymore. Did we talk about, um, I'm sorry, I was busy looking up stuff. Did we talk about the Parks Department uh, presenting the yes. concepts? Okay, sorry. Yes. And the park itself is under construction right now. So nobody can really go to walk around with that and look at it. You can drive drive around with that and look into it, I think. But so we don't just a dirt, 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 dirt. dirt. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're underway with that one. So far we Yeah. Okay. Next we're, next item is on uh, the maintenance. Well we have maintenance report. Which, the bank thing is about nature's way. So the executive committee came out on the morning when it just snowed at 20 degrees, and we looked at the five artwork that are on Quail Road on the other side from up the bank from here. And we have, if you may remember, we have estimates from conservators about restoring all, all of the five pieces to their former glory for some version of that. So, Daniel, you want to talk about what we decided or what? What's... And I also have a statement from um, Stephanie and Cindy, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think for the most part, there's only a few pieces that we really were all. I wish I had the list in front of me. Oh, that's okay. But yeah, so the Go Fish Fountain, and then the other one is the trees. Yeah, those are the two that we want to do the full the full scope basically. So spending the basically the amount of money, the top amount of money allocated for those restoration projects on both of those. Um, the benches, um, everything else is looking pretty good. It's all stuff that we can powder coat within the um, city and not have to go with the company. So we all agree that we're probably gonna keep it. The one thing and which I was playing devil's advocate on, which is the the piece that you like basically like look into the looking glass piece, but right now where it's positioned is it's literally looking into people's homes. <laughs> um, it's very awkwardly placed and the whole entire thing needs to be completely taken apart and re it needs new lenses. The the whole thing is really gonna be a lot of money. Um at first I was thinking because of the fact that we had already looked at a very similar piece um, going on to Main Street. Um, and doing another one of these kind of viewfinder things, um, 
and kind of was like, well, we've already talked about it in the last year being another one. Maybe we should just fix this one that we have. But the more that I like drove up and down and been around that area more and kind of really thought about it, the piece is definitely, even out relocating it on that same like area is going to be very disruptive, I think, to to the former neighbor, to all of the neighbors, and it's just kind of a weird piece. So I think mostly everybody was kind of on the fence um, getting rid of that piece and taking it out of the collection. Um, I was trying to fight for it, but now I don't know if it's really worth fighting for personally um, because it's a really, it's really bad. And it's also a piece that I think isn't going to stand up with the test of time either. I think it'll be something that people would have to um, and invest a little bit more than we would on the average pieces. So that's just my own input, but yeah. Yeah, so those two pieces got tabled. Um, so in your last meeting, you did formally allocate that, that subcommittee to make the decision of up to X amount of dollars. And so the Go Fish total estimate is somewhere between five and 7,000, the kinetic archway trees, which got tagged today. Thank you yeah. very much for sending that to me. Um, but um, oh, that was, street got tagged though. The whole yeah, street, the whole street got tagged. Um, and uh, Chris, our graffiti specialist, is going to be out there tomorrow. The weather's warm enough for him to do pressure washing. But um, then the trees estimate was somewhere between 6,400 and 6,800, with a total to be spent of somewhere between 11, 5, and 14, too. So, um, and that's for those two pieces. The Go Fish piece is a fountain and it's mosaic along the way. So I think that that, personally, I think that that is a really good decision because it actually functions. Um, Stephanie Wright and um, Cindy concur that the executive team is acting as maintenance review committee recently completed a group inspection, um, both in reviewing the artworks, but also reviewing the Pacific Coast Conservation Proposal. The art is rapidly aging, um, and uh, the I spy piece specifically was severely damaged from the flood because I think the conservation report says that there is bio material inside. It was like, why don't you just call it what it is? It's mold. Like, it's mold. Okay, it's like, okay, so, so it's kind of moldy. All right. Um, uh, we all felt that the proposal was reasonable um, uh, for a high quality restoration and stabilization. Um, we also recognize that the restoration proposals are a fraction of the cost of ripping in the new replacement project would cost, and that these pieces are important to the neighbors and users of, of that part of the Greenway system. Um, that the remainder of the collection, so the back bench is one, and the other one is the leaf chairs. Um, are suffering some rust, some fading, and maybe need some powder coating in um, the future. But I can tell you with confidence that I can do that work without having to put it out of house, deinstall those ourselves, get those over to the powder coater ourselves, and save on having a super high professional do that. But the plaster work, the masonry work, the mosaic work, that's outside of, you know. Um, so, um, yeah, so we'll be moving forward with that, and then Pacific, we'll get on Pacific Coast uh, Conservation's schedule for this year. And that, I mean, that 14002 it's a little bit less than what I budgeted for this year's maintenance. Um, you know, we could do probably a little bit more, but that's pretty much going to max us out this year. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Maintaining, it's not as fun as buying. I know, but yeah, um, I think it's gonna be great. I think we should rededicate with it all things too because I like that. They are so pretty. And yeah. the mosaic piece is so sad with all of its tiles. Some of its tiles have fallen off, and the neighborhood really does like those pieces. I don't think that the ice pipe matches the rest of them very well. It's not the same scale. It's Anyway, yeah, but the decision on that is tabled. For that it is yeah. totally tabled at this point. Um, also, in other news, while we were walking over there, we found a bunch of the 100 faces up in trees what? along that section of the Greenway. Yeah. I have some weird Not that the artist told us that that was where he, that's just legacy knowledge that is in Lauren's head, and she must have known that they were installed there. Anyway, yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's like three of them. So I'll show you some pictures. Wow. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. yeah, it's good to know that they're there. These things happen. Uh, Okey doke. Any other questions on Nature's Way? 
Should I just keep going? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. All right. I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna tuck the traffic boxes in to oh, your yeah. business yeah. real quick, even though it's not technically new business. But well, we're not in business yet. No, we're not. No, we're we're on boards and commissions. Oh, 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 yes. Okay. Right. When I added one. All right. Did everybody receive and see the code of ethics document that our our friendly and fabulous city clerk sent to us? Yes. Yes. Did everybody read uh, the? Understand. Yes. Does everybody okay. understand? <laughs> that means like I don't know. Okay. Eve is nodding her head. Melanie, did you read? I'm sharing it okay. here. Yeah. Um, this is da, 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 da. this is not so um, the important part is here where it says um, that this is coming to council which if you have any comments about it and you don't want to go to public invited in here I'm sure Susie has all ears um, but basically the new code of ethics um, addresses how uh, a complaint would be handled should you find yourself in a situation where you have violated um, and it's just expanding on our events. Luckily for us, I would say that um, because of your onboarding, every I know how I beat the drum so much about open meetings and transparency laws and those kinds of things, um, I think that we all um, were pretty much the things where we could be not in compliance, I think we handle pretty well. That said, this part of the code of ethics is going to be added um, and on the 23rd, which is a week for us next Tuesday rather, at 7 p.m., this item is going to be uh, on the agenda. And so if you have any sort of complaint or problem or questions about it, either sending it up to me, to Susie, or to council, well, actually there's an email council, you can send it to the whole council, but, or to Dawn. So please, just within the next couple of days when you're really tired and you can't seem to fall asleep, uh, will you please open this code of ethics and just make sure that you really understand it. And, um, so, anybody have any questions about that? David did not get this for me. All right. Now that we got that snoozer out of the way, let's move on. Uh, okay, so I'm next to be the, um, the traffic boxes. Now we'll go to traffic boxes. Okay, hold on. And there is a traffic box. box. I see at two. Third. <laughs> I saw that third day of the department was from here, and I sent you a link. Okay. I really like that. Yes, they were great. That's completely cool. Okay. Share in the metaverse. Share in the real verse. <laughs> yeah. And okay. Ta -da! Oh my goodness. So that's the one out near the airport. Um, again, because you know, their boxes and the images are, you know, horizontal. I think we're in a, we're still in a little bit of the learning curve of where the crop has to happen. And so as the subcommittee continues to go forward, like really honing in on what images are best, but this one, and I don't have them in, I don't think we have them all in the round, but um, we'll, we'll, I know you have some from the guy that to the insults, right? Yeah, I didn't know. I kind of was like, I really did not think it's, this was my least favorite. I never wanted to joke. This one's really actually yeah. looks yeah. great. Like, it's it's no so one's fun. walking in that area, so like you're driving by it, it's Recognizable, but yeah, it's it is so. It, it really is an idea. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like the way that it laid out. I do too because it yeah. almost looks 3D. It's a little, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, I have to stop it and then I have to go to the next one. I don't understand. No, you can just um, no, because it's in your email and I didn't link down. Oh, I, I put them, I sent you a link on Teams for where I say, oh, Teams. <laughs> there, I also, there's videos of them too. Okay, you can go to Teams. Oh, I see seriously. Seriously, who's the one who used to be for Zoom? 
Oh, you were talking about that today. Skype. Yeah. Skype. Skype. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's like forever. Don't worry. Yes. Have you seen Joseph's Quest? Yeah. 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 Yeah
until she said. Well, also, yes. 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 Okay. Well, Ooh. the videos I took so that I could put them on social media. I get more engagement with videos. Than yes, I'm sure. So, yes. Yeah. So there he is. He's always so cute. Oh, yeah. That is perfect. It's so great. Oh, okay. I like yeah. those. It's fun. And they're all, they got the, like, the glasses and the whole thing. The, the way that the, like, I scan the images, they're, like, this big. The fact that they're that big and you can still see the detail is, like, incredible. Yeah. I just thought they were going to be grainy. They're a little bit. They're yeah. so pretty. They look very yeah. good. I'm surprised. It's so great. And then for the most part, like, this is a good example. You can't really tell, but, um... I had Jared, who's our um, exhibitions curator, help me with where we were putting the logo. But because the doors to the cabinets are on different sides and things like that, and we had like a primary side that you would see, like the, as frontal of an image as you could, that's where we stuck our logo. But see, and then this one has the door on that side, so it's like City of Walmart, and a couple places is like hidden down there. This is just a learning curve, you know? We, that's why we only did six, because we knew we were gonna probably like them and all of that, but there's just some of these little hiccups that we just gotta kind of get past. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is so, so, so good. So good. It's a show about a part of 3 from other cities. I love it. Yeah. Isn't it great? Yes. <laughs> And, and like, so some of the images that we looked at, the roller, the girls in the 80s with their roller coaster, they're on a roller coaster and their, their like, hair and their bangs are, like, flopping. It's <laughs> so good. Like, it's so good. But it, the format didn't fit. But now that we've done this, I think we probably could Photoshop and, like, you know, even though the roller coaster's coming down this way, we might be able just to, like, you like yeah. align it so it would work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so let's just say that our jobs are pretty awesome. That is true. Yeah, and we purposefully put, I just, this image is so fantastic. So hopefully, in the in the right in front of the, in front the Civic of Center. So on oh. the, yeah, in front of the up there. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, we can match. I see. Yeah. I love that we have the, all these different seasons too. Yeah. Winter. Yeah. I like the cow. The cow is fun. So the only commentary that I've heard back from um, traffic so far um, that is that um, they don't want any along Main Main or the highway. Um, because of how distracting they could be. So we'll continue mm -hmm. to talk about that, please. Because, no, well, but Jim did say that he's like, there are hundreds and hundreds of these around the community, which is great, which means that we can just meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. I hate to say this, but Denver recently outlined Colfax with different artists along the streets and along like the poles. And I gotta say that is one of the most distracting things. It really was. We were like we were driving and trying to figure out how many art, like how many different artists were along Colfax. And I was like, mm -hmm. and then like, literally my husband was like, this is really distracting. <laughs> like, it's like, especially on Colfax. So I can kind of understand where they're coming from. Like, yeah. it's going to take double the <laughs> As far as downtown goes, it is supposed to be 25 miles an hour. People, and it's usually crowded. People are not going that fast. Right. And the other thing that we did was made sure that for the most part, the figures in the, in, in the images weren't potentially construed as a human standing at the corner. Oh, okay. So while like even our little motorcycle dudes, I would say is about as large of figures as we have that potentially could be construed as there's somebody standing. But there's enough, I think, contextual right clues there that it's not. Mm -hmm. But so there are some images where there's some really great people like holding beats and things like that. Mm -hmm. But we're really, what we're really trying to get is images that have enough of a landscape mm -hmm. uh, orientation that it, it wraps effectively. So yeah. anyway, super okay. successful people are talking about it already. And as soon as we get that tour up and going, um, we're going to be talking about it everywhere, right? Yeah. Okie doke. Okay, great. That was fun. Um, oh, Nettie, Nettie, Nettie has something. You're muted. Sorry. Is she not here? Nettie, I'm speaking to your shoes. Oh. 
Can you send out locations for these? Yep. I love you. Yeah, we'll send a map as well with the two. Okay. Sources. Yeah. Awesome. Okie doke. Okay. Um, next item on new business the Walmart Art Arts Week coming up in September. Yes, so um, please, please, please put on your calendar Longmont Arts Week. It will be the second year that we, the city of Longmont, are actually calling Arts Week an Arts Week and effectively doing a thing. What the thing is, we're still working on, um, and we're gonna get there, but we know for a doggone fact that Art Walk will be September the 14th, Saturday, September the 14th, and then promotional things that are related to art and culture in our, in our neighborhoods and things like that will be promoted all week long, and then it will culminate with Saturday the 21st at Roosevelt or Rhythm on Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. um, so there's gonna, September's gonna be a lot of action, just so you know. So really, um, I have committed uh, Art and Public Places to that art walk that we're gonna, which we have done in the past, um, but we'll really be spearheading that um, initiative so just get that on your calendars and as it comes into focus we'll let you know um got any other questions popping up tents and that thing all right and then i'll just keep going on um, on, on new business i'm adding hidden paths unseen trails the glass artwork that is in the museum here um as we're going into the gallery if between now and next month, everybody can attempt to try and go and see it because the museum is expanding and that wall is not gonna be there anymore, which means that there, it's going to be relocated. And Eric Mason, the museum director, will be coming to you next month with updates of the museum expansion, architectural drawings, and I am imagining and sure hoping a solution to the problem. Um, and keeping it here at the museum and also publicly accessible. So the reason I have it on new business is you'll see it on the agenda next month. And again, really, really helpful if you go and see the work. And this does belong to us, right? Yes, this is a public okay. artwork, so, which also means that it needs to stay in a portion of the museum that people don't have to pay to go and see it. Okay, so that's the edge glass work. Correct. It's down the hallway going to the gallery. It, it's like, you go to the bathrooms, right. and then there's that hallway. It's right down that hallway right. to your right. So similarly, just FYI, the vinyl installations in the bathrooms right here are also ours. Correct. And what about the edge glass in the, in the atrium? Interestingly yes. enough, technically, um, that does not belong to Art and Public Places, even though it's the same artist who did in Paths on Sea Trails. That was purchased by the Family Foundation who was responsible for Swan Auditorium, Swan Atrium, and um, that is the uh, decorative piece for Swan Atrium. Okay. All right, just so you know, we do have some pieces here with these. Yes. Right. Oh, and you know, that. Three years later, we'll be here. Yep. Yes, Susan. No. And altar piece, did we talk about that? Uh, we're getting plexi boxes priced out. So, yeah. And we are going to have a dedication of that when that goes up, right? Yeah. But we don't have a gain on that. Either. Right. Okay. It's fine. It's a uh, plexi of glass is expensive. It's a petroleum product. Everything's expensive, but. I don't think it's going to be expensive since it's actually entirely parking. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other commissioner comments or announcements of any kind? If you know anybody who is interested in applying for our public places, the, de the deadline is the yep. tomorrow. It's either the next nope, it's time. It's it is? Fine. It's okay. okay. And Susan yep. has, has? As I understand, yes. Yep. Okay. It is tomorrow. Two commissioners who are term limited, term no, you're term limited, 
And we have two more who are at the end of their turn and for reapply. That doesn't mean you can't still come. But I'm going to be, I'm still um, a, what do I want to say? An ambassador for the museum. (laughs) I'm out there in the community. You do? Yeah. You know, I'm going to call for a selection panelist. Right. All right, and with that, okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Um, I'll move, I move to start it and move to end it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, so. and I second. Okay. Okay. Does anybody want to discuss whether we should adjourn or not? Happy birthday, Susie. Happy birthday. Thank you. All right. Happy birthday. Officially adjourned. Next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.